Google has been programming a woke AI system that can censor the internet. This is according to Zach Voorhees, a former Google employee turned whistleblower. He explains that AI is at the heart of the future internet, determining what content is shown, how facts are weighed, and which voices should be suppressed. What Google is doing, he explains, is limiting the information the AI system is exposed to so that its breadth of information is limited to biased sources. This is programming the system with its own political biases, which can undermine the basic freedoms of online speech. We speak with Zach Voorhees about this system, how it relates to the new revelations on censorship at Twitter, and what this means for the future of free speech and online expression. Zach Voorhees, great having you on Crossroads. Great to be back. Yeah, always a pleasure. Well, I mean, you know, we're watching right now what's happening with Twitter, Elon Musk releasing the Twitter files, and people are saying, we're, we're watching how the FBI, different federal agencies were involved with censorship on the platform. That's like a big, that, that's become a big scandal. And a lot of people are asking, well, we know this about Twitter now, what about Google, what about Facebook, what, you know, YouTube, of course, under Google, you were the whistleblower on some of this. Tell us what's really happening. Look, like right now, it's official that Twitter and Facebook both had backdoor access to the FBI. They were giving requests about what they wanted to, you know, have removed. And I think it's pretty obvious that this isn't just a problem with Twitter. This just isn't a problem with Facebook. This is a problem with YouTube. This is a problem with Google. Um, it's yeah, well, happening and, and probably and with course, TikTok you, you, as you well. You're one of the Google, Google whistleblowers, yeah. of course, specifically, yeah. And the thing was is that, like, I always had this question of who was writing these blacklists that I was watching inside of Google. And then the, yeah. the backdoor access kind of came out with the Twitter, and I started to reevaluate, like, maybe some of these blacklists are actually being written by, you know, from requests from the FBI, requesting certain content, certain keywords being banned uh, on social media. And I think that that's pretty much what, what the ultimate story is going to be when it's all revealed is that at the end, they gave back door access to the FBI and other three letter agency, uh, three letter agencies. And that's happening all, all across the world. So let's step it back a little bit. You were working at Google. What, what year was that? What was your position? You know? Yeah. So I worked at YouTube from 2016 to 2019 when Pretty much everything went crazy with uh, Donald Trump's election and the censorship and the defining of fake news. And then yeah, when they really started cracking yeah. down. Yeah. And then, you know, I heard about this censorship regime called Project Dragonfly. And I went to try to find Project Dragonfly. And it turns out that it didn't exist. But what I found instead was the real censorship engine, which was called Machine Learning Fairness. Machine Learning Fairness. Yeah. What is that? Machine Learning Fairness is Google's AI that censors its main products, uh, Google Search, Google News, YouTube, and uh, it pretty much classifies all data found on the platform, and then they can know which signals to amplify and which signals to uh, suppress. Well, because a lot of people, if I go on YouTube, I assume they're giving me stuff based on my search history and my interests. You're saying it's not like that. There's there, maybe to an extent, but there's intentional manipulation for political reasons. Look, if you like to go, you know, look at videos that involve baking, you're going to get more stuff about baking. But if you go to like one of these blacklisted terms, uh, they're going to try to not give you more of that content. They'll give you alternative content on the next up algorithm. And uh, that's pretty much how it works. Like everything works great until you get something that is politically sensitive and then uh, they're going to suppress it. And the next time you search for it, it may be even harder to find. That's what a lot of journalists are finding. It's like, oh, I used to be able to find it like a month ago, and now it's gone. And that happens all the time is because of this uh, um, you know, machine learning fairness that they're using that constantly evolves what it is that you can find on the internet. And if they can shift that over to the window to the left, then people like us are essentially programmed by it. Well, and I, I can see it. I mean, as a journalist, I, I, I do research all the time. I remember the algorithms, you know, the, the search functions on Google, for example, it used to be very easy to find like certain articles I was looking for yeah. based on certain keywords. And it would give me a pretty good, you know, selection, to, you know, a, you know, a pretty good results based on what I was looking for. And it was really good. I'd often find exactly what I was looking for. I find these days that I can't find half of it. Yeah. Uh, even searching my own content, because sometimes I remember like, oh, I did, I did an article on this years ago. 
I'll look for it. I can't even find it using Google. I have to use other. I have to actually use other search engines typically to find it. You're saying that basically this is part of a intentional manip, or maybe not this specifically, but generally, this is a potentially intentional manipulation process based around political interests that they're doing, or they're making it more difficult to find things that go against you know, the narrative they don't want, basically. Right. And the thing is, is that they're boosting authoritative content. So what the BBC says, what the Guardian says, these mainstream leftist organizations are ranked within Google as having the highest authoritative value, right? So well, it, that's what they say, credible sources, right, right? Exactly. So it's like the New York Times, top of the list. If the New York Times writes a hit piece about a certain topic or person, and let's say that's part of the local election, you're going to search for that. And the first five, you know, links are going to be to this is what the mainstream media has to say about that. So they can redefine reality. You know, if Wikipedia gets changed, then it's like, oh, the authoritative source of Wikipedia says that this thing is, you know, uh, not happening or uh, a conspiracy theory and not real. And now people don't know what to think because they don't even know that there's psychological warfare and an influence operation being targeted directly at their minds. Well, and we see this as well because they kind of circled the wagons, so to speak, around like the the systems they control. Uh, Wikipedia, as you mentioned, will only take will only take references from like basically mainstream media and like journals and so on, which are all typically of the generally the same like political leaning or like just the establishment in general. If sources outside of that tiny boundary right. are not regarded as credible sources. Right. Then what is like, you know, I mean, I, I don't think Epic Times can even go. I, we, we, I don't think we can even be cited on Wikipedia, actually, last I checked. And so, you know, if, the, if people say, what is your proof? What is your evidence? You know, when you're talking about things that maybe debunk established narratives. Right. It becomes a cathedral in which everyone is self-referencing each other. And mm. uh, if you can't, if you're not part of that inner court, then you can't get your opinion heard. And mm. your definition of reality no longer makes sense in their sort of echo chamber. Hmm. Now, now, I know you wrote a whole book about kind of the way these algorithms work, and you, you had actually internal Google documents detailing some of this. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're watching what's happening at Twitter. We're, we're not really seeing the inner workings, like the mechanisms at play. Like you, you actually get into the mechanisms yeah. of what was happening, like how the systems work. What did you see there that made you concerned? What I was concerned about was how they were curating their data to generate these AIs that were then biased with uh, social justice values, call them leftist, progressive, whatever, but they're pretty much adhering to the current thing, the current narrative of well, the mainstream so, media. So we, we talk about algorithms. Right. You're, you're, you, could, you could technically call an algorithm an AI as long as it has like a machine learning element. You were saying the, it's a neural net, the, though. the censorship is within the machine learning, though. Yes. Explain that. So AI is a product of the data that gets fed into it. And so if you want to create an AI that's got social justice values, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to only feed it information that confirms that bias. Wow. So, so by biasing the information, you can bias the AI. They're, they're, they're pretty much coupled. And so that's what they're doing.